If you love the look of shaker cards, but you're tired of cutting out fun foam or layering up a whole bunch of foam tape, this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in today's video, I'll be sharing the latest Trinity Stamps, a bunch of their shaker card designs. They've created shakers for slimline cards, circle cards, A2 cards, and more. Plus, they have a really awesome assortment of shaker goodies to go inside. So let me share some of the new supplies that I'll be working with today. So these are the different acetate shaker pouches that are available. They have an A2 size, they have a four by five, and a quarter size. They have several slimline sizes and several uh, circle sizes as well. They also have some tape that you can use to hold the shaker pouches together and they have a sheet of that tape that you can die cut and I'll show you how to use those. There's also plenty of shaker goodies. These are so cute and colorful. There's rainbow glitter enamel dots as well as wavy lines background stamp. This is the Sea Life Silhouettes Clear Stamp also comes with dies. The multi-porpoise stamp set which multi-porpoise means that the sentiments are multi-purpose. So you can see there's birthday, Christmas, and all kinds of things with those cute little Little porpoises and there's dies to cut them out and the sentiments as well. There's also a underwater scene background clear stamp and dies that cut that out. This is the foiled fish cut and foil die set as well as the jellyfish wish stamp set, die set, and stencils. So you can use the stencils to color in the jellyfish and then there are several that you can cut out as well. Now let's use those supplies to make some fun shaker cards. For this first card I'm going to create with the Jelly Wish stamp set and stencils and dies but I'm starting with that wavy lines background and I'm stamping it with Distress Oxide ink and I'll add some different colors to parts of the wavy lines to make my waves multicolor so that they look a little bit more dimensional and just have some added interest to them. So you can see I started with a light color and I added in a little bit of a darker color. To add to the underwater scene, I'll add some of the silhouette stamps. So I have the bottom of the ocean floor there as well as some silhouettes of different fish and sharks swimming throughout. And I just decided to use a darker blue to make a shadow of them rather than have them be very, very detailed. But for the jellyfish, it will be very detailed. So I'll stamp that with Versamark ink and add some glitter embossing powder on top. And when you heat set that you have both the silver and the glitter and that will resist ink so I'll use some mini blending brushes to color in over the stencil with different colors of distress oxide ink and since all of the background is blues. I chose to go with a little bit of blue in the prize ribbon, but more purple. So I have the shaded lilac and the seedless preserves to make this jellyfish really stand out against the background. Once it's all colored in, I will use the dye to cut it out and then just cover up some of the white spots that I didn't want to remain white. I'll cut that panel down to four by five and a quarter and mat it on an A2 piece of navy cardstock. So this shaker I have here is an A2 shaker. It goes from edge to edge on an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I will place the rip and stick tape down on the back of my A2 panel, and then I'll remove the protective layer on three sides only. You wanna keep one side protected so that it will remain open and you can pour the shaker goodies inside before you seal it all up. I like to use a bone folder to seal up the edges because the acetate is pretty thick. So you wanna get a really good fold and you wanna reinforce that fold and reinforce the adhesive as well. So a little bit of a bone folder going back and forth will do that. Then you have that one spot that's open at the top and I decided to pour in a whole mix of shaker goodies then peel off that last protective strip and use your bone folder one more time to really close that up. Actually this was not the A2 
panel to panel, side to side. This was the four by five and a quarter. So I did mat this all on top of some silver mirror cardstock to make it an A2 card. And you can see I'm just really tapping to make sure all those goodies kind of go to the bottom so that I can then shake them around. For the sentiment, there was a happy birthday and a nice script that I decided to use. And I also stamped and heat embossed that in silver glitter embossing powder. This is a really fun, colorful card. And I like having that ocean theme for the birthday. That's just something different that I don't normally get to make. So for this card, I'm also using the wavy line stamp, but at this time I'm just stamping it in Versamark ink and I'll pour some pearl embossing powder on top. The nice thing about the pearl embossing powder is that it doesn't really add color. It just adds shine. So you can see there's that pearlescent look to the waves in the background when you heat set it and those just look really nice without being overpowering. Now, I was having trouble with, I guess it was my power cord, and so I wasn't able to foil these little fish, but the designs in the center can be foiled and then they can be die cut out. So I used the foil plates to actually emboss the design of the fish, and then I just ink blend on top of those a little bit just to have a little bit of different colors and then added some white gel pen details. So these will look phenomenal when they are foiled. And now that I figured out that it was actually the power strip that was giving me some problems, I will have no problems foiling these in the future. And I'll share later in another video how they look foiled because they are just too cute for words. But I just really wanted to use these fish today so we just went with what I could do in the moment. So that is, again, a little bit of ink blending on cardstock and then some white gel pen details. I will stamp and heat emboss with white embossing powder the sentiment that says, sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Once I pour the white embossing powder on top, I'll pour off the excess and then use my heat tool to heat set it. And it's okay if you reactivate some of the waves, just be careful not to smudge them. Then I'll use a little bit of liquid glue to adhere down my fish to the background. I love the mix of the coral or orangey color and the light blue. I think that is really pretty. I was gonna go with some coral dots, but then I. I saw how cute the blue looked as bubbles. So I took the coral off and I just stuck with the look of bubbles. This time it is an A2 panel to panel or side to side shaker. So I actually put the little tape onto the acetate this time and I'm folding it once I peel off the release paper right onto the panel. So this one is a full A2 shaker. So I'll do that for three sides once again, just peel off that release paper and then use my bone folder to fold back the strip, the tab that's on the side, and really get it to stick down to the cardstock. This is the back of my panel. And then I'll flip it over and pour in different shaker goodies. I love all the options that Trinity Stamps has available of shaker goodies. They have so many, there's something for everyone there. Then peel off that last release paper and use the bone folder to really fold down that top and you have an entire a2 panel that is just filled with shaker goodies. You can put so many in there. For this card, I am going to use the multi-purpose stamp set. I've stamped in some alcohol-friendly ink on some alcohol-friendly cardstock, and I'm using Ohuhu markers to color these cute little porpoises in. Now, I think of them technically as all kind of grayish, but I thought if I grab some really light pastel blues, light purples, light blue-greens, that they would look just as cute, and I would be able to add a little bit of extra color so that the whole card wasn't just gray, which they would still be cute, honestly. Look at those little faces. They're absolutely adorable, but it's fun to add a little bit of pops of color on them and to have them be kind of unique. Each one of them has its own little color combination, and you can see that there's sort of a darker patch on the bellies, the underneath side of the porpoise, so I have those in different colors as well. 
well and that just adds to their kind of unique little qualities or accents for each of them. I also tried to keep the faces as light as I could. They're the same color as the bodies but I just don't go over the faces as many times when I'm coloring them in and blending them and that allows me to add little cheeks or little you know elements to their faces and of course some white gel pen details because why not they always look cute I think even if it's just little dots or little lines you can you don't have to add anything really specific or do anything really artistic just a couple of little white dots and it just looks so much fun okay for the six by nine sticky rip and stick tape these sheets I die cut it into the same size as this circle so I have a circle in cardstock that is going to fit inside my shaker circle I'll peel off one side of the rip and stick and put it on the back of that circle. Now I'm going to decorate the circle with my porpoises. So I have some liquid adhesive and I'll just place them all so that we can hopefully see all of the little faces because they all have little smiles. They're so adorable. Now I'll be able to put this inside the shaker panel. So I'll peel off the back protective layer of that circle and then I'll be able to just fold down all of the tabs in the circle. I'm gonna leave a small section open again for the shaker goodies, but all it takes now, because I have the whole back covered in adhesive, is just folding in those tabs. Plus, I'll be able to stick this entire shaker circle down onto my card. So I pour in some shaker goodies in that little spot that I left open. There are some tabs that are still open. Once I have the shaker goodies in there, I have to close all of those tabs that will trap all of my shaker goodies inside that circle. Now there's still adhesive in the center of that circle. So I've cut another circle out of white cardstock that's an A2 piece of white cardstock and I'm using that to line it up, to line the circle shaker up where I want in the background. Then I put adhesive on the back of that die cut white panel there and lay it right on top. This way you can see the blue in the background but the front of the card remains white. And then I cut out and stamped and cut out some sentiments. This one says, happy birthday, I hope you enjoy this all purpose card. And again, you have that shaker circle in the center. I don't know about you, but I think shaker cards are one of those types of cards that everybody loves to receive. And they look like so much more work has gone into them than they do when you use these Trinity Stamps shaker designs. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. See you again soon. See you again. <laughs> again soon. <laughs>